is Devin here and this is the January book review. This is the first book review of 2020 and I have three books for you today to review. And before we get into it, I just want to say that um, I didn't read as much or as consistently this past month as I would have liked to. Normally I read during the day and then at night like when I go to bed because I find it relaxing and all that stuff. And there were a few nights this past month where I went to bed too late or I was like tired by the time I went to bed so I didn't really feel like reading so my reading wasn't as consistent as I would have liked it to be but I'm hoping that it will get better um, very soon and obviously be more consistent I'm not too concerned about like reading a lot of books I just would like to read consistently obviously I would like to read more but starting kind of with just reading consistently so like I said I have three books to review today and two of them are in the fantasy genre and then one of them is in, I guess, what you would call like an apologetics, maybe educational genre. I'm not exactly sure how it's categorized. Um, but yeah, let's get into the review. So the first book is J.R.R. Tolkien's The Two Towers. This is the second book in the Lord of the Rings series. And before you read this book, you should read The Fellowship of the Ring. And I really like this book because, one, because I like Lord of the Rings. And I like Tolkien and his writing. Um, also because it's just a really great fantasy adventure book and I just really like the characters and just the creativity that Tolkien had and just how he, he created this whole um, realm of Middle-earth um, and just the whole history behind it I really really like. This book follows um, Aragon, Legolas, Gimli, Gandalf, Merry Pippin, and Sam and Frodo after the breaking of the Fellowship and it actually, it's kind of different the way it's um, written because the first half of this book, it's actually kind of like two books, so it's like book three and then book four. And the first half is all about Mary Pippin, Gandalf, Aragon, Legolas, and Gimli. And it's just talking about them, like after the breaking of the fellowship, Mary and P Pippin were sort of taken by the orcs, and Gandalf, and Aragon, Legolas, and Gimli were all trying to find them and rescue them. And then Merry and Pippin, you know, fight, meet up with Treebeard, and then they go off to Isengard to, you know, fight Saruman and all his stuff. And then Aragon, Legolas, and Gimli um, meet up with Gandalf, and then they go off to um, Helm's Deep to fight the battle there. So that's that's what's going on with all of them. And then it ends, like it ends their story with um, Gandalf and Pippin are heading towards Minas Tirith, and Aragorn, Legolas, Gimli, and Merry are kind of like left behind at like Rohan and they're trying to figure out like what to do next, where, where do they go next, and all that stuff. And then with Sam and Frodo, it's, it starts off where um, they have left like the Fellowship, like after the Fellowship has broken, and they're heading towards Mordor. And they, um, you know, they go through like, you know, the swamps and they meet up with um, Faragon you know, then they actually make it into Mordor, and that's where it ends, it's actually when they made it into Mordor, it's, actu it's after they have fought Shiloh the spider, and Sam thinks Frodo is dead, and then he finds out he's not dead, and then Frodo is taken to the tower in Mordor by the orcs, and then Sam, it kind of leaves you where Sam is trying to figure out, you know, what does he do, does he go and rescue Frodo, does he go destroy the ring, like, what does he do, and that's like where it leaves off. I really like the way that he writes. Um, it's not too detailed. Um, he does go into details with like, like the settings and stuff, but it's not like too much. There is a lot of dialogue sometimes in in some of the chapters, um, like when they're debating or trying to figure out what to do. But it's not too much where it's like, you know, where they're kind of like, okay, come on, where's the where's the action? You know, there's a good balance. If you if you've only seen the movies, there are like characters and situations in here that are quite different from the movies, but that kind of makes it exciting because instead of you just reading a story that you're already familiar with, you kind of um, are experiencing and learning some new stuff, which is really fun. Overall, it was a great book. I really enjoyed it, and I would definitely recommend it. The second book is Madame Mayo, and this is the third in the Redwall series. Now, there's Redwall, and then Moss Flower, and then Madame Mayo. Now, even though Madame Mayo is third, it's actually the sequel to Redwall. Um, so Moss Flower, which is like in the middle, which I think I reviewed in last month's um, review, that's kind of like the prequel to Redwall, so it's kind of in that order. 
Um, you don't necessarily have to read Redwall before you read this book. Um, some of the characters, like, there are references to the Redwall book, and some of the main characters, I mean, it would be helpful if you knew their history, um, you know, just by have, having read Redwall, but you don't, you don't, it's not really a necess, it's, it's not necessary. Um, that's one thing I like about this series is that they all are connected, but at the same time you don't necessarily have to read them all. You can just you can just read an individual book and you can still follow along with the story and enjoy it and you don't feel like you're lost or really, really um, confused. Um, but like I said, this does make a lot of references to some references in both Redwall and Lost Flower, so it could be helpful to read those other two, but I don't really think it's absolutely necessary. This book follows the story of um, Matthias and the other warriors of Redwall. Basically what happens is Matthias's son, Matameo, which is what the book is named after, which is the title of the book, um, his son and the other young young ones of Redwall are kidnapped by this villainous fox and they are taken to a mysterious, or they are, be, they are being taken and led to this um, mysterious kingdom that you never really, um, for most of the book, you don't really know a lot about it. You just know that they're be being taken there and that they're going to be used as slaves to work in this kingdom, to build this kingdom. So you don't really know a lot about what this place is and really all that's going on there or who's running it. And I really kind of like that. I like how not too much is given away because it kind of keeps you wanting to read it more and more. And after the young ones are taken, um, Matthias and all the other warriors of Redwall are, you know, they set out to try to follow the, you know, the fox and the young ones and try to rescue them. And while they're gone and they're, they're doing that, those who, are, those who stay behind at Redwall are um, having to deal with these um, invaders that come to Redwall who are trying to take it over and they're led by this raven, Ironbeak, who is trying to take over the abbey and trying to live there. So you have kind of like three different um, kind of groups to follow and adventures um, to go along with. And it's really kind of fun. It's, it's a really fun series. I really, really like this series a lot. Um, I like it. It's kind of more, um, leans more on the whimsical fantasy side. Um, not just because they're woodland creatures, but also just the way it's written. Like when it starts and when it ends, it's, it talks about Redwall Abbey and like what's going on there and like the feasts and preparing for the feasts and things like that. And it gives you sort of an idea of what life is like at Redwall Abbey. And I really, really enjoy that because you, um, you really just get an idea of you know what it's like to live there. And they also talk about the food that they make a lot, and if you read these, be prepared to be hungry because the food sometimes, it sounds really, really good. And I, I really like these because they're well written, they're, are, they are pretty quick reads, you know, and they're also the kind of book that, at least for me, I have a hard time putting them down, I just want to keep reading chapter after chapter. And I also like how, even though they're woodland creatures, you have really great villains and heroes and you have really great struggles and triumphal moments so it's all really really fun and it's just a really great book and series and I would recommend not only this book but the entire series as well. The third book is C.S. Lewis's book Miracles. Now this book that I'm holding right now has seven of his books in it so it's just one of the books in here but this, specifically the book Miracles, um, I really like, I feel like I need to read it again though because there's a lot of information in it, um, a lot of different um, worldviews and perspectives and things that he's talking about that I think it would be better to just read it again just to, um, you know, just kind of re-familiarize myself with it and, you know, really make sure that I'm really remembering it. It's not that I didn't get it the first time I read it or that it was too complicated. It's just one of those things where I think you kind of need to read it, you know, kind of review and go over it again to make sure you really are, um, you know, remembering it right. But um, I would recommend this book. I'd really recommend all of his books, at least the ones that I've read so far. I still have some more that I want to read. Um, but this book is basically asking the question, are miracles possible? Are they probable? Do they exist? 
um, do they exist in this known universe? Do they, you know, what worldview are they allowed in? How do they affect, you know, like the laws of nature? Um, you know, does the laws of nature go against miracles? Do miracles go against the laws of nature? All that kind of stuff. And one thing I like about his writing, there are a few things I like about the way he writes, um, especially these kind of books, is one, he doesn't start off, like he asks the question, do miracles exist, but he doesn't, you know, or are they probable, but he doesn't go instantly into answering that question. He kind of has you take a step back and look around and kind of see first, okay, you know, there are different worldviews. There's naturalism, there's supernaturalism, you know, which one of these, you know, you know, is compatible with miracles, which one of these conflict, and you know, which one of these is more accurate, you know, and, you know, he goes on and things like that. He also talks about different religions and how miracles affect different religions, like are they needed, are they required, how much are they required in certain religions, um, and then obviously in, in worldviews, um, and even secular worldviews as well. Um, he speaks specifically about Christianity, um, he is a Christian, he actually was an atheist for most of his life, and then he became a Christian, so um, I'm not sure if that helped, but he, when he does write about things like this, he obviously is coming from a Christian perspective, but because he kind of, the way he writes, he kind of like takes a step back and tries to look at the whole picture, it is a more neutral um, perspective and viewpoint, which I personally like because anytime I'm reading about stuff like this, I always am trying to find neutral viewpoints. I mean, with most, you know, authors and people, especially with topics like this, you're going to find people who are a little biased or kind of push for their worldview a little bit more. Um, but, you know, so you're not always going to find something that someone who's like fully neutral. But I do like his writing because it does, it does keep it more neutral, I think. I think than you know some other um, you know than other ways he could write it you know it's not as biased as it could be I guess that's what I'm trying to say um, which is helpful because when you're looking at stuff like this um, when you're talking about like, miracles and world views and which one is true you want to be as neutral as you can and you want to be as unbiased um, and as objective as you can to really find you know the truth of the matter so I like when I find um, authors who are often referencing the other worldview correctly and who are, you know, who have like footnotes or who have like, you know, lots of references that you can then go and look into more to see like, okay, how accurate is this and things like that. And he writes a lot like that. He references books and other people and quotes people. Um, and I really like that because you can do a lot of fact checking if you want. You know, you don't have to go that detailed, but it's helpful. But he also talks in here about old creation, new creation. He talks about, you know, again, like Christianity and miracles and naturalism and supernaturalism. And it's just, in this particular book, Miracles, it's just, um, there's a lot in there. Like I said, he makes you step back. So he's kind of looking at a lot of different things. He also talks about um, consciousness and the mind and, um, what that means for naturalism, what that means for supernaturalism and Christianity as well. Um, even though he is a Christian, like I said, he's pretty neutral, so if you're not a Christian, um, I think that you would still enjoy the book, you know, this perspective, especially if you're interested in this kind of topic. But I would definitely recommend his book Miracles and his other books that I've read so far. I still have more of his books that I want to read, but so far I've liked quite a bit of his writings. And, and yeah, I'm looking forward to reading more of his work. I would just definitely recommend his book Miracles. Okay guys, so that was the book review for this month. Here's all three of them. I'll be leaving links down in the description below to Amazon where you can check out all three of these books and get them if you want. You don't have to use those links. I just provide them, you know, just for so that they're there. Um, but yeah, I would recommend all of these. Um, I have two other books that I've already started. I'm like in the middle of them and those will be for next month's review and hopefully I'll have some more um, We'll see how I do with the reading this next month. Hopefully it'll be more consistent. So yeah, everyone, that was the review, and I hope it was helpful, and that this video and review was helpful with, you know, all these books, and that I gave good, you know, information about all of them. And yeah, I hope you all are having a great day. Go out, have some fun today. 
Um, subscribe if you'd like to, and like. I don't know why I did this for subscribe, but you know. Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!